So welcome to shopping online, buying a device. Tim's going to walk us through what to look for and what to avoid, I assume. Thank you, Tim. All right, so this is uh, kind of a mashup. It's shopping online and it's also buying a device. We generally do, the, do this in November just because of Black Friday. It's on a lot of people's minds uh, buying things and more and more people turn to online. Um, so as always, if you have your email set up with Mary, she will send you a link to the slides and to the video presentation. We are kind of far away from Black Friday, so I don't have as many links as years previous. But if you check this, um, the presentation, the slides in, you know, next week, if people want, I can add links in there as to, you know, some of the deals for, you know, laptops or honestly, whatever, whatever people are interested in. And we'll also go over how to contact us if you have like a specific thing that you're looking for. Um, I always like to start this off by saying that, you know, everything online has risks, but the main way to mitigate uh, any risk when buying online is to go through big companies that you recognize the name of. You know, if you buy something from Amazon versus if you buy something from a Fred's discount computer, um, you're gonna have a better chance of actually receiving the item and nothing weird going on if you buy it from a big retailer like Amazon. Uh, whenever I think about buying things online and deals in general, I like to think of what my grandfather said, which was if you weren't planning on buying something, it being on sale doesn't save you money. So if you're not looking to buy something, even though it's a pretty good deal, uh, you're not necessarily saving money because you didn't need the item in the first place. Uh, the first thing um, we're going to go over are deal aggregators and price checkers. So I do want to point out that uh, at the end of this, um, I will be going through how to use some of these. Right now, I'm kind of just going to go through and get you, you know, familiar with the names and what they do in general. So uh, there are a lot more than are listed here. Um, I just listed a couple because I find an inundation of choice uh, oftentimes has the opposite effect. So the first one is slickdeals.net. What this is, is it's a deal aggregator. So someone, a member of the community, so some random person will find a deal. So something that is on sale, they will then put a link to it on slickdeals.net and then other users, so other normal people, will either say, yes, this is a good deal or no, this is a bad deal. One of the reasons why I really like Slick Deals is in that section where people are saying, yes, it's a good deal, no, it's a bad deal, is people will comment. So someone will say, hey, I've had this you know, device for two years and it's worked great. Or someone will say, you know, I bought this and then it was horrible and I had to return it. So it's just another way of getting reviews for a product. Uh, the next one is Reddit. We have done a full class on how to use Reddit, but basically you can find any community on there. Um, the two examples I have are a community titled Buy It For Life and a community called Frugal Male Fashion. There is a female version, but basically both, both, uh, both of these communities are built around people sharing their experiences with products or posting if something is on sale or if something is a good value. The next one going down the list is Camel Camel Camel. This is one of the originals. What you do is you'll go to a site like Amazon. You will take the URL of the item you're looking at. You will then put it in Camel Camel Camel. And then Camel, Camel, Camel will tell you if the price has changed in the last year, the last 120 days, the last 30 days. So you can kind of see if something is really on sale or not. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. The next one is Honey. Uh, Honey is very nice because you don't need to think about it on websites where it works. It just kind of pops up on the side of the screen 
and it will tell you, you know, this is a good time to buy this product. It's the lowest it's been in 30 days um, kind of thing. It also gives you rewards for buying things. And the other nice thing with Honey is if you see a product that you want, but you're waiting for it to go on sale, there is a button just to say, add to my drop list. And you can set it up so if the price drops 10%, Honey will then let you know, and then you can go purchase the product. The next one is fake spot. Um, as we all know, a lot of things online can be faked, just like reviews. So if you see a product on Amazon that has, you know, a thousand ratings and it has a 4.9 out of five star rating, uh, some of those reviews may be fake, and fake spot tries to tell you. You know how many of the reviews are fake. It tries to aggregate the positives and negatives that people talk about in the comments for the reviews. Um, is overall a, an interesting tool to look at. Uh, the next one is Mac Rumors. This is specifically uh, a link to the page where they aggregate the deals for Apple products. Apple products don't have deals often. Um, but Black Friday, you can generally get about $200 off certain things. Uh, and the last one would be news sites uh, or review sites like Wirecutter, uh, specifically around holidays. So around things like Black Friday, they will generally put out a list of, you know, a hundred things that are on a really good sale right now that you should buy. And then they'll have like a very short little review attached to it. And we can look at that at the end as well. Uh, the next thing to think about when shopping online is payment options. Um, as always, you want to make sure that the page is secure. You can see this in Chrome by looking at the left-hand side near the URL bar, and there will be a little green lock icon. If you don't see that, then I wouldn't trust the site. Um, you can also pay for things using PayPal. This is probably one of my favorite ways to pay for things online. Um, every single time you do a transaction through PayPal, it will essentially generate a one-time use code, which means that uh, whenever you buy a credit card, buy something using a credit card, you'll type in the credit card number, you'll type in the number on the back, you'll type in the expiration date, and you'll type in your name. And those things don't change. But if you buy things with PayPal, uh, you will essentially, in a similar vein to a credit card, it will send that information. You will then buy the item. And then if for some reason that information gets stolen, uh, it can't be used again because it's only a one-time use thing. Whereas if your credit card is stolen, it can be used multiple times. Um, oftentimes when you have, or when you use a credit card, uh, you'll get a little bit of fraud protection. So you can do like a chargeback or if you, uh, you know, if someone steals your credit card information, um, the credit card company will be able to give you that money back as long as you talk to them within a reasonable amount of time. And no matter what you do, please do not use a debit card online. It's like a credit card, except less secure. Uh, there are multiple types of businesses that you can buy things from. As always, since this is Peterborough, we recommend you shop local because that's the type of community we are. Uh, but we're going to quickly talk about online only. There are a couple of different online only retailers. I do understand that Amazon has, you know, their grocery business in large cities that they're doing. But uh, for the sake of this, they're online only. Um, Amazon has some nice perks to it. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you get things like free expedited shipping, um, and you also have access to member-only quote-unquote deals, um, especially around things like Prime Day. Uh, another benefit of Amazon is it's the biggest thing that you know that people go to to buy online, so it has a lot of reviews of products on it. Um, one thing uh, that you want to look at if you're buying things is try to make sure that the product is fulfilled by Amazon. Uh, you'll see that on the right-hand side of the product page. 
And basically, if something is fulfilled by Amazon, you have a little bit more peace of mind and a little bit more recourse if something doesn't go well in the transaction. Uh, as part of Amazon Prime, uh, it is it is a subscription, a yearly subscription. Uh, you do get more than just the expedited shipping and the occasional deals. You get Amazon Photos, you get Amazon TV. So there are some additional perks to using Amazon. eBay. Uh, eBay is really nice for things that are very specific, like car parts. Um, and you can find parts on eBay using their search. Uh, a couple things when using eBay, make sure that you look at the rating of the seller and also make sure that you look at the shipping price. Some people will you know, have a good price for an item on eBay, but then it turns out it's $20 to ship or something of that nature. So make sure you're looking at the rating for the seller and looking at the shipping. If you're looking at buying things kind of locally from individuals, uh, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are basically the two games in town. Um, whenever you're doing a transaction through this, um, oftentimes it'll be either through something like PayPal or just cash, uh, make sure that you meet the person um, in a, you know, a well-lit familiar area. Uh, also make sure that, you know, you're not overpaying even though it's on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and make sure that you, you know, make sure that someone knows where you're gonna be. Uh, again, this is, you know, New Hampshire, this is Peterborough. We're not exactly the most crime-ridden area in the world but you might as well be a little bit safe. Um, so just make sure that if you're buying things through this medium, that you exercise a little bit of caution because you may not know who the other person is. All right, uh, the next section is online with brick and mortar. So what this means is these are brands or companies that have an online presence and physical store locations. Uh, some of these would include Best Buy, Costco, Macy's, Apple. The thing that's nice about buying from a brand that has both online and a retail presence is if you have an issue with a product, you can go to the physical location and return it. Um, you also have generally very fast shipping just because it's they have places all over the country that you can pick items up from. You can also do things like order something and then pick it up in a store. Um, you can sign up for kind of like a weekly newsletter from companies like these, and then they'll send you a list of their weekly promotions, just like uh, coupon books were for, um, for grocery stores. But the main reason why it's nice to buy from places like these is that you can buy it online. If there's an issue, you can physically go into a retail location to very quickly get the problem resolved versus an online only store where you would then have to box the item up, ship it away. They would then have to verify that it's not your fault. Then they would fix it or get you a new one and then ship it back. So you're talking, you know, a day process of going to Best Buy, bringing your whatever device doesn't work anymore, getting it exchanged or fixed versus sending something out, waiting a week. Uh, they then review the product, waiting a week, and then they ship it back to you, waiting a week. So, you know, same day versus almost a month of downtime. Uh, there are some new ways of shopping. Uh, I've gone over this before last year, uh, but I'll quickly kind of go through it. Um, there are things called group buying. If you've ever, I'm sure everyone's realized that if you buy more of one thing, it's actually it gets a little bit cheaper once you get up in the quantities. So if you buy a hundred of an item, it may be 10% off the entire order kind of thing. And what group buying does is it gets a group of people together and then you all buy the same thing and then the group buying site will make the purchase as a group, and then you'll get slightly better pricing. The negatives with group buying are that you're generally not getting the item very quickly, uh, but I have some 
you know, some of those group buying things listed if you if you want to check it out. The next thing is subscriptions. So these are like subscription boxes. Uh, basically, you can sign up for these and then, you know, once a month or once a week or once a quarter, half a year kind of thing, you'll get a box with things. Uh, this is nice if you kind of don't want to be really, really hands on with things that you're buying. Uh, so things like Bespoke Post or Stitch Fix or Dollar Shave Company. Those are kind of the monthly things where Dollar Shave Company, every single month you give them, you know, five or $10 and they send you new razor supplies for shaving your face or whatever. Uh, Stitch Fix is kind of like a clothing company where you don't really know what trends are. You don't know what's fashionable. You just know I'm this size and I want clothing. Um, and then they'll send you a box every month with new clothing that you can try on. And if you don't like it, you can send it back to them and they'll refund you. Uh, then you have things like Blue Apron, which is one of those meal services where basically they will send you the exact portion you need to cook a meal. So you get the benefit of doing like a home cooked meal. Um, so you feel like you're accomplishing it and you kind of know exactly what's going in your body, but it's also cheaper than ordering out takeout um, is kind of the kind of the thing Blue Apron's going for. And then FabFitFun, um, I think that's a fitness one. I actually forget at the moment. Um, I just knew I wanted to add something that I haven't personally used. So that would be FabFitFun. Uh, another one, another type is pre-group buying or wholesale. These are basically companies that uh, get individual people interested in a specific item. A group of those people will say, yes, we want that item. The company will then go out, buy materials to make that item and then make the item and ship it out. Uh, the negative with pre-group buying is it takes forever to get the item if you even get it. Uh, so things like Beckett, Simone, uh, I am butchering that name, and Gustin, those are kind of like clothing brands slash uh, footwear brands where they want the money up front. Uh, they then buy the materials, make it, ship it out. So it takes you know a month to three months. And then Kickstarter uh, has been in the news a lot, but it's basically where people pitch their ideas. Uh, and then if you buy the item, uh, you're putting uh, you're putting your money towards the person, research and development costs sometimes, where they will then get the materials, make the item and ship it out at a later date. Uh, I see someone commented on Blue Apron, uh, only good things to say about it. Yeah. Um, I think Blue Apron and HelloFresh, I think, are like the two big ones. Um, I used it. Uh, I liked it. My only issue is if you've ever met me in person, I am a rather large individual. So what turned into their dinner for two pack uh, was essentially dinner for my wife and an appetizer for me. Uh, so we started ordering the family of four so that I would get enough food, um, which made it less attractive for the price. But the food was always really delicious. So, and it's nice. You get to try new things. Uh, the next section um, or the next statement is, should you buy expensive or should you buy it cheap? Um, there are two roads of thought. One is the uh, buy once, cry once statement, which is basically you buy the best one, the best thing initially, and then you don't have to buy it again. The other method is what I like to call the Harbor Freight method, which is you buy a Harbor Freight toolkit, you know, so you get a hundred different tools for like 20 bucks because it's Harbor Freight. And then whatever tool in that toolkit that breaks, that means you used that tool enough to where you buy that specific tool from a um, more long lasting potentially brand. Um, both have their ups and downs. 
in general, uh, I err on the side of if it's something that could hurt me or potentially cause me bodily harm, I will buy expensive because I want to be safe. And then if it's something that won't cause me harm, uh, then I'll generally go with the Harbor Freight method and just buy it for the cheapest price. If it breaks, then I buy a better one. So um, kind of just put this in there. Uh, this slide goes over how to contact Mary um, if you want advice on things like computers. So if you want a specific computer or computer size or thing that you're going to be doing with it, like you want to do video editing, uh, let us know and I can keep an eye out for the Black Friday stuff um, or any time of year for whenever there's something that would make sense for your budget. Uh, and then we can email it back to you. But we can go over how to do this without my help uh, at the end of this class. And yes, uh, the budget question, I'm not making any money off of this. Um, so your budget is purely so that I don't come back with solutions that are above your budget. Um, so you know, if you want to spend only $600 on a laptop, I'll find a laptop that's, you know, between 500 and 625 kind of thing. Uh, I just don't want to, you know, find you a laptop for $1,000 and then it turns out that's way above your budget kind of thing. So that's why the budget is asked for. Inevitably, um, and I've gone over this many, many times, um, but uh, people ask, you know, how long should I wait to replace my electronic devices? Uh, a good thought exercise is laptops will generally last three to seven years. Um, so that means if you buy, you know, a very cheap laptop, you'll get three good years out of it versus if you buy a really expensive laptop, you can get seven good years out of it. Uh, this isn't saying that you should buy a cheap laptop and replace it all the time. This isn't saying that you should buy an expensive laptop and not replace it. But whenever you're thinking back and wondering, my computer is a bit slow, should I buy a new one? Uh, if your laptop is eight years old, then that's buying a new one should probably be in the conversation. Um, there's a quick little thing blurb on what to look for if you're buying a laptop online. You generally want something that has at least eight gigabytes of RAM, has the storage capacity of at least 512 gigabytes uh, using an SSD. And then right below that, I have kind of the price ranges that I would personally look at. So if my home laptop died today, I would be looking to spend 200 to $500 for a Chromebook. Uh, $700 to $1,000 for a Windows laptop or $1,000 to $1,500 for an Apple laptop. Um, if anyone has questions about that, I can answer that. But uh, the brands I generally err towards uh, are Lenovo, Dell, HP, and Apple. Um, and then when possible, I also recommend going for their uh, enterprise or business line. So places like uh, Dell and Lenovo will have two different product lines. One is for consumers. One is for businesses. The business line is generally a little bit more expensive, but slightly better built. So I view it kind of like um, if you had a choice to buy, let's just pretend Toyota Corollas have no rust protection, right? You could either buy a Toyota Corolla without rust protection, or you could buy a Toyota Camry for a little bit more that has rust protection. Living in the Northeast, it sometimes would make sense to buy the, you know, pay the little bit more upfront to get, you know, a better quote unquote quality vehicle. Uh, for Chromebooks, um, the price really, really ranges. You can buy them for really cheap, around 200 bucks. You can also get Chromebooks that are absolutely specced out of their minds for over a thousand. 
Um, I find the sweet spot to be about 250 to uh, 350, uh, but I did put the range as you know, 200 to 500 or whatever I put the range at. Um, the benefit of a Chromebook versus like a Windows laptop is it has a lot less bloatware on it. Um, also, viruses are generally not made for Chromebooks, so they're a little bit more secure in that regard. And they also won't, you know, quote unquote, slow down as they age because Chrome is just a really lightweight operating system. Uh, the other benefit is since everything is on the Chromebook, it generally is also on the cloud. So if your computer dies, uh, you're not as worried because you basically already have it backed up because you're using the cloud, whether you know it or not. Um, I also have a link to a Chromebook that's currently on sale. We're also going to use that link in a little bit uh, to show you about the earlier price checkers that we talked about. Um, as always, there will be more sales as we get closer to Black Friday. Uh, desktops. Uh, is there anything you can't do on a Chromebook that you can on a PC or Mac? Yeah. So, uh, Chromebooks. Um, whenever you think of a Chromebook and what it can or can't do, just think about how much time you spend using your web browser. Uh, a Chromebook can basically do anything a web browser can. So a Chromebook cannot run the desktop version of Word, of like Microsoft Word, but it can run the online version of Microsoft Word. So more and more, uh, the need for a traditional desktop is going away and people can get by with something like a Chromebook or an Apple iPad where things are more and more online and more and more app based. So you wouldn't necessarily buy a Chromebook if you wanted to edit photos or do video editing or do you know audio mixing. Uh, but if you wanted something that was very portable, very cheap, easy to carry around and you know check your email, uh, visit websites, look at Facebook, you know, just 95% of Chromebook is a really good option, primarily because of the price. Uh, for desktop computers, um, so laptop computers are the clamshell devices that, you know, you can take anywhere and then they have a battery and you can use them for, you know, eight hours without plugging them into a wall. Uh, desktop computers are the towers where you plug them directly into a wall. Uh, you have a desk for them. You sit at the desk and you work on them. Um, desktops will generally be faster than laptops. Uh, they will also last longer. And they just, in general, the price to performance ratio is better. Um, I have some, a little bit of things to you know, look at if you're planning on buying a desktop. Uh, you want an i7 or an i5. That's Intel's offering. Uh, AMD also makes very good desktop um, CPUs, but their naming convention is a little more difficult. Uh, but you want, you know, 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM for a desktop, 512 gig of storage space using an SSD. Um, and once again, just like laptops, I recommend buying the enterprise or business class versions of these things. Um, do we have any questions before I go on about like who should use a desktop versus who should use a laptop or any questions about the difference between the two types? Anybody have any questions here? Yeah, you saying the editing photos and video editing, et cetera, is you can't do it on Chromebook. So then you're stuck with a desktop that you can't lug around. Oh, no. So you can edit video and photos on a Chromebook. It's just that if that is something you want to do, uh, Chromebooks would not be my first choice. But you could get a different kind of laptop rather than a yeah. 
Any questions? No. Okay. So then if you got a different type of a laptop, it wouldn't be as secure as the Chromebook, you said, because that's already up in the cloud. Yeah, so um, the Chromebook being secure and it being in the cloud are kind of two different things, but you can argue that they are similar. Um, the Chromebook being more secure is basically based on market share. Uh, there are more Windows computers in the world. So if someone was you know, writing a program to steal information from a type of computer, they're gonna go with a Windows computer, which is 70% of the world versus the Chromebook Mac combo, which is like 27%. Um, it just makes more sense to attack Windows. Now, the cloud is nice because your computer is essentially always backed up. If you're using a Chromebook. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody in, on Zoom? This is a good time to, to ask Tim. And there will also be time at the end for questions. So if uh, also at any time you can write questions in the chat and then as soon as I see it or Mary sees it, we'll, we'll bring it up. Um, here uh, are, is a page with some links. Um, so I know a lot of people think about TVs. So I have a link to a TV that's relatively decently priced. Um, uh, the brand TCL makes pretty reasonably priced uh, computers, and they're pretty easy to use, so I generally recommend them. Uh, laptops, I have links to Dell, Mac, and Lenovo laptops. Uh, desktops, I have links to Lenovo and Dell. And then if you want to uh, make your own uh, desktop, which is uh, something I highly recommend. Uh, I find it fun to do, and it is a lot easier than you think. Um, I have links to uh, how to how to build your own kind of thing. Um, we have a question of what makes the cloud secure. So multiple things make the cloud secure. Um, the main thing, uh, because I'm cynical, is the threat of lawsuits. Um, if a cloud storage company was not secure, uh, then they would get sued to oblivion whenever data was mishandled and stolen. Um, but basically what makes the cloud secure is they use encryption. So it's difficult to uh, get into your account um, as long as you have a strong password. Uh, we have done classes on how to have a strong class or, or password, and we've also done classes on how to use the cloud. But uh, the main benefit of using the cloud isn't necessarily its security. The main benefit to using the cloud is you can set it up to autom automatically back up your computer or automatically back up your photos. If you're anything like me, uh, you use photos and such kind of to remember uh, what an event was like. Uh, it's kind of nice to go back, you know, 20 years ago and see what you were doing. Um, and the cloud means that I don't have to, one, find that photo album. And two, it doesn't, it means I don't have to um, ever worry about kind of losing that, losing those memories. So that's why I like the cloud. It just makes me less likely to lose things. Um, here, I have links to what I'm currently using. Um, I don't, I realize I gave a recommendation earlier, but in general, um, I don't like to give recommendations. I generally phrase it in the way of, this is what I would tell my parents to buy. Um, but if you're wondering at all about what I actually use, um, you can click on those and then just not think about it. If Tim uses it, it can't be that bad kind of thing. Um, and then you can, you know, follow in the footsteps of my happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is phones. Um, uh, top of the line phones are generally about $1,000. That is a lot of money. Um, I have found that you will have a better experience with the higher end phones. Um, 
you know, you can buy, you know, iPhones or Android phones that are cheaper, which is perfectly fine. Um, but I found that if you want to keep your phone for, you know, three, four, five, six years, uh, just getting the higher price point phone initially will allow you to do that and not kind of get frustrated with the device as it ages. Um, both Apple and Google have their moderately priced options at around $450. Those are also fantastic. Um, and you can always, through your carrier, generally get uh, a pretty big discount on, on your phone. Uh, but that comes at the cost of, you know, being forced to use Verizon for two more additional years kind of thing. But if you're anything like me, um, I'm basically Verizon ride or die for life up in the Northeast. So that doesn't bother me too much. Uh, printer, I've been asked about printers. So I just have this page up there, feel free to peruse it. But generally I like brother printers. All right, so we're in the question stage, uh, but while everyone you know gathers their, their thoughts on questions, um, I'll just go over one of the options that I actually linked. So uh, we're going to go over this statement. If I was buying, if I were buying a new Chromebook, I would buy this. Uh, currently, the price is three hundred dollars. So I will click on the link and click. It opens up. It opens up to this. Uh, we can see. I will increase the resolution for all of you like me with bad eyesight. Um, and we can see that the price is $299.99. So clearly this is under $300, which makes it a fantastic deal. We can also see that the list price right below it is $429.99. Well, that seems fantastic because it means we're getting $130 off. Um, but realistically, when was the last time this computer was sold for the full list price? This is where things like Camel 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 and Honey come into play. If I look on the right-hand side, there's a big H that's orange. If I hover over it, I can see Honey. So Honey is basically telling me that it has recently had an 11% price drop, which essentially means that it was not $429.99 yesterday before the sale started. So if I were to click on see price history on the right-hand side, I would get taken to this page. So this page is for the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5i, uh, released in 2022. It is a Chromebook 2-in-1 laptop, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if I scroll down a little bit, I can see the price history. So I have the option to do last 30 days, 60 days, 120. So over the last 30 days, it was $338. And now it is the $299. So for Black Friday, quote unquote, we actually see that basically we're saving $38. So it's still on sale, but it's not as big of a price drop as you would initially be led to believe if you didn't check it. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's still probably a good deal, but I just want to get you know, the conversation started for you guys of, of not, you know, looking at the start price and the current price and thinking that, you know, that is the sale. The sale is often a lot less than the full price to the sale price. Um, the next site that we had talked about was Camel, Camel, Camel. Uh, similar thing, I would go up to the URL bar at the very top. I would copy the URL. I would then go to Camel, 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 click in this box, in the search box, paste the URL, hit search. It would take me to this page 
where I can look at Amazon price history. So I can see date range for three months, one month, six months, one year and all. Um, six months and one year are not selectable. That's because this is a new device. So it you know didn't exist over six months ago. Um, so I can see that generally whenever it first came out, it was about, oops. Whenever it first came out, you know, it was $430, a little bit cheaper, probably around like 415, let's call it. Um, and then now it's at the $299 price point. So I can kind of see the graph of what happened. Uh, it's a very similar graph to um, to honey. Honey kind of tries to make it soft with these little lines, whereas camel, camel, camel is just straight lines up and down. Um, so this is just a way to see kind of the price history of an item. The next thing we had talked about was fake spot. So if I go to the Amazon listing, I can see that it has an average of 4.5 stars out of five. That's good. Mm -hmm. And 147 ratings. So if I click on 147 ratings, I can go down and I can see what people liked about it, their reviews on it, and that can kind of make me make a more informed decision about purchasing this product. Um, so you can feel free to read through them. What fake spot does is it reads all of the reviews and it tries to figure out which ones are fake, uh, which ones may be paid for. Um, and it also aggregates the pros and cons of the listing of the, of what the reviewers are saying about it. So pros and cons, it's kind of nice. You can see kind of a quick synopsis instead of reading through all of the reviews you can see quick bullet points about it um, apparently it works great for streaming uh, it's very fast um, easy to make it look like a tablet so just things that people like about it um, you can also see comments that specifically mention the quality uh, the price shipping competitiveness all that stuff. And then at the top right of fake spot, you can see a letter grade. So I don't wanna say that if an item has a letter grade that's poor, you know, an F or a D or a C, that that means that it's a bad product. It just means that um, fake spot thinks that it may be uh, a little bit you know, not all of the posters may have given the best uh, information, not written the best review. It seems like people are just copying and pasting reviews kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, this one got a C grade. Uh, the other nice thing about Honey is what's called the drop list. So if I go to this Amazon listing for this laptop, and I think, hmm, $300, but I kind of want to see if it goes lower. I can go over to this Honey tab again, hover over it, and I can see, I can click on Watch for Price Drops. What this means is I can add it to a collection, and then I have set it to if the price drops 5%, uh, then Honey will send me an email saying, hey, this product that you were interested in went down in price, which is nice. Um, then if I go to Honey and I go to drop list, I can see that I have this device in my drop list and I can, you know, remove it from my drop list if I realize I no longer want it or if I bought something else. And I can do that by hitting the trash can icon to remove it from my drop list. 
Um, it's also kind of nice because you can go to different websites. Uh, so like Best Buy's website, Amazon's website, eBay, whatever. Um, and you can just drop list things that you're interested in, and then you can go through and kind of look at them all at once. Chromebook. He's using Chromebook as an example. Okay. Um, um, and then I'll quick go to slickdeals.net. Um, I do want to say like uh, all of these things I'm talking about, all the you know things that you can use are are free. Um, so don't worry about that. No price necessary. Uh, this is what Slick Deals looks like. It is the aggregator of a lot of different deals. Um, if you want a specific item, so for example, if I'm looking for a laptop, I can go to the top search bar, hit laptop or type laptop. And then I can see all the deals that people are talking about uh, that are related to my search term, which was laptop. So. I will make this a little bit bigger. Uh, here's how to read what Slick Deals tells you. On the left-hand side, uh, you can see a tiny image of the item. You can see the title of the item. Then if you move over to the right, you can see the price. Uh, after the price, you can see the rating. It uses a thumbs up system where if someone likes it, they do a thumbs up. The more thumbs up it has, uh, the better the deal kind of thing. And then you can also see to the right, the activity of the actual post of the actual deal, how many people have looked at the view, who have looked at the uh, thread and how many people have commented on it. Uh, the thing I really like is the comments. So for example, um, I'm interested in buying a super big gaming laptop for $500. I will then click on that. Uh, it will give me a quick synopsis of what the laptop is. And then if I scroll down, I can see people commenting about the deal. So if someone asked a question, is it easy to upgrade the RAM? Someone answered. Uh, and then people will also talk about, you know, if there's a better deal out there, if it's not that good, if they had a good experience, bad experience. But I just like that there are comments from people talking about this thing. So it can help you make an informed decision. Now, just because I'm showing laptops all the time, uh, doesn't mean that this doesn't apply to, you know, other things like a fridge. You can use slick deals for fridges. You know, so I see that. Apparently, if I was a Costco member and I wanted to spend $1,700 on a fridge, that Samsung has a 23 cubic foot four door French door refrigerator. I don't know what those words mean when they're put together like that, but I can see a thread on refrigerators. So you can kind of search for whatever uh, you're interested in. I know whenever I buy a fridge, um, or if I were to buy a fridge, I would kind of wonder what to do with my old one. So I noticed that one of the comments says that if you buy it from Costco, it includes the installation of the fridge and hauling away of the old one, which means I wouldn't have to take it in my friend's pickup truck that I'm gonna make because I need a friend with a pickup truck, take it to the dump, or the recycling center, and then you know pay that disposal fee. There's a lot here, Tim. There's a lot to explore. I mean, there's it's very it's a very open ended um, topic. So definitely, if anyone has any like specific questions, I kind of just wanted to go through what. Uh, the different, you know, tools looked like, um, what Slick Deals looked like, Camel, 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 Honey. Um, and if anyone has any questions about, you know, how to install Honey or how to use it, or again, like how to search for Slick Deals kind of thing, um, we can go over that. Um, and also, if you have any questions that you forget, 
um, or you think of afterwards, you can always let Mary know and I'll add it to the slides. Um, and then if you have any, you know, things, if you have like a specific item you want, I, I can look at it and try and find it for you. And then uh, Mary can tell you whenever there's a, a sale or a deal or what a good one might be. Um, one of the things to uh, remember when you're buying like a laptop is uh, the size of the laptop. Um, some people are okay with, you know, a 12 inch screen. Uh, some people really want the biggest laptop the world's ever created at like 18 inches. Um, my personal preference is 14 inches. So make sure that whenever you're buying something, uh, you're not sacrificing what you want in order to get a slightly better deal uh, because things like a laptop or a phone are gonna be with you for years and years. So you don't wanna kind of stick yourself with something you're not 100% happy with. Tim, this is Kat, the question. You said three to seven years for the life of the laptop. How do you know when you're running out of its life? Is there a monitoring that you can get aware of what's happening? Well, you can just kind of look up your model and see when it was produced. Um, and this is like a, a rough estimation. So I personally have had laptops that I've used for, you know, 10 years. Um, but generally uh, with computers, if something is going to die or break, it will happen within the first three months of you using it. Um, after that, at around five years, is when the incident of the computer dying will start to increase. So basically the, the statement is saying that your computer uh, can last longer, but it gets more likely that you'll need to replace it at that higher end mark, so at the seven year mark. So with laptops specifically, uh, your battery will probably start to die. And then you'll be tasked with either paying, you know, two to three hundred dollars or whatever it will be to replace the battery to get a new one and get a new one installed, or spending, you know, double that on buying a new computer. And oftentimes it makes sense to not keep a seven-year-old computer and and throw money at it. It would make sense to buy a brand new computer from the get-go. So does anybody have any specific issue uh, questions for Tim about what they're thinking about purchasing this season? I have a question. Yeah. In the summer, I'm at a remote location. I can get cell phone service. And even then, that is great. But is there a way to buy is there a laptop that I can integrate with the cell phone to to see what uh, what's on the phone? Yeah, so you can buy uh, laptops. Uh, you can also buy tablets that have a SIM card in them, uh, which would allow them to connect directly to kind of whatever your preferred network is. The other option is using something like a MiFi. Um, uh, a MiFi will uh oh you're breaking up sir just that will give you internet um this one st starts at you know two dollars and 22 cents a month um i've never used it so i can't you know recommend recommend it but it's one of those things where if you already have verizon or already have at&t you can often find a mobile hotspot uh, that you just carry around with you. Uh, the benefits of a mobile hotspot are that the data is separate from your phone. So if you have a limited data cap, you're not gonna, you know, you, you don't need to worry about your phone running out of that data, that quantity of data you have. The other benefit is since mobile hotspots are designed to only receive a cell signal 
and give it to something else, they will generally have better cell coverage just because the entire thing is an antenna. That's, you know, its entire job is to receive a signal. So you'll often fi oftentimes find in like a low coverage area with a cell phone, if you have a dedicated unit like a MiFi, you'll get slightly better service. And do you, do you buy a plan from Verizon for the? Yeah. So no matter what, um, if you go with like a MiFi or a laptop with a with a SIM uh, built in or tablet, uh, you'll have to purchase an extra an extra data plan. Okay. What was the first before the um, before the MiFi? You mentioned a different brand or something. I don't know. I didn't catch the name. I wasn't familiar with it. So I don't really know what you said. You yeah. So have a SIM card, something to do with SIM card. Yeah. So let's see. Um, you can buy laptops that have the ability uh, for you to put a SIM card in them. And by putting a SIM card in them, then they can receive cell service. So if you had a cell phone that had an unlimited data plan, which is what Verizon's pushing these days, um, would you just use that as a hotspot as opposed to a laptop? Are there any disadvantages to that? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, with Verizon, uh, depending on which unlimited plan you have, um, it is technically unlimited, but it will throttle you. Oh, right. Um, so potentially, if you're on vacation or something and you want to use it for Netflix, uh, for example, uh, Netflix will absolutely destroy any data you had. It takes a lot of data to stream uh, stream video. Um, and then afterwards, you would have limited data, which means you're still getting things like emails, mm -hmm. um, and you can still kind of browse the web, uh, but it will be very degraded. It'll be a very slow experience. Okay. Yeah, if you have like a true unlimited unlimited, then that would be a fantastic way to go, is just to set your phone up as a hotspot. Yeah. So does Xfinity... Um, get in under Verizon, what works with Verizon? That's our new carrier, is that Affinity? And yeah, so terrible. I think... I'm getting, my husband isn't, but I'm getting terrible service where we now live. Yeah, Xfinity is uh, what Comcast is pushing. Um, <clears throat> I believe Xfinity can use Verizon Towers. Yeah, that's what I'm told. Yeah, okay. So theoretically, Xfinity is using Verizon cell towers. So it should be very similar. So does anybody have any last minute questions for Tim? Thank you, Tim. This has been really, really helpful. I feel like it's a, it could be a full-time job looking for the best deal. I th I think there are. Uh, I think they're just called like procurement specialists or something. Right. That's good. In my next career, I'm going to become a procurement specialist. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if anybody, if you have questions um, that you think of, feel free to email me and I'll make sure that um, Tim... Uh, researches it for you and we'll get back to you. Next month, we're going to do a year in review. We're not sure exactly on the date on that, but I will send that out by email fairly soon. So thank you, Tim. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.